morning. My name is Keith Grossman. I'm the associate publisher of Wired, and it is my pleasure to welcome you all back to the Wired Health Conference in partnership with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Uh, as, as we mentioned yesterday, and as you saw yesterday, uh, from Rick Smolin and Kevin Kelly and Gary Wolf and Michael Graves, and today um, we're thrilled to uh, you know, provide you with insights and leading thoughts from some of the leading minds in science, health, and medicine. Uh, much like yesterday, today's about sparking conversations and learning, not only from our speakers, but from one another. So make sure you tweet, you share, and you use the hashtag WiredHealth. But before we get started, I wanted to extend our special thanks to our partners. First, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, who co-created this concept and whose generosity made this event possible. Our premier sponsor, IBM, who will be doing a very special session today after lunch and our premium sponsor, MD Anderson, who recently announced a $3 billion moonshot to fight cancer, and our exhibitor sponsors, BASF, Body Media, iHealth, and Tomorrow Mobile. And now, it's my pleasure to introduce my editorial counterpart, Thomas Goetz. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and welcome to those on the live feed at the Wired Health Conference. So, so spread the word there. We, we, uh, we have not only this room, but thousands out there. So, uh, so that's an important part of the community. Um, we had this uh, amazing run this morning that I just wanted to, we had, we had 20, 25 of us got to, to you all got the chance, um, but only, only 25 of you um, took the bait to, to want to run with the gold medalist, Aston Eaton. And uh, we helped Aston set a couple new records. Um, we got him to do his first run in Central Park, uh, his, his first group run, and the slowest run he's ever done. So it was, it was uh, wonderful, uh, wonderful. And it was also the most tracked run, I think, in history. There were, there were 20 people and probably about 50 tracking devices. Um, so there's, seriously, there really were. There were, there were th this guy had three devices on him, bone on each wrist and on his, anyway. Right, four. Okay, so so 26 uh, tracking devices. So anyway, it was it was great fun. Um, yesterday was was incredibly inspiring. I think and a wonderful start. We had um, uh, Rick Smolin and, and Gary and Kevin talking about the power of big data and the majesty of big data. And then we had this amazing talk by Michael Graves, where he was you know talking about this the, the, the power of small data, the the ruler, right, the unit of the smallest unit of measurement. We don't even think about it, but the distance you know, uh, that a, a mirror is from, from the ground or, or the distance a bed is from a chair. Those, those small differences are so important. Um, I think it, to me, it really opened up the, the idea of um, the, the power of data to, to open up what's right in front of our eyes sometimes. So I think we're gonna really explore that today and, and uh, I'm ecstatic about it. I think uh, the best way to start is to, to introduce um, uh, John Lumpkin, Dr. John Lumpkin. Um, the senior vice president at the uh, Robert Wood Johnson Foundation. Um, he's also the former director of the Illinois State Department of Public Health, a, an emergency room physician, and a true um, a, a leader and a teacher and a visionary in the science of public health and medicine. So please join me in welcoming Dr. John Lumpkin. Good morning and welcome. This has really been uh, quite an exciting event and Thomas, thank you so much for the opportunity to partner uh, in this Living by Numbers venture. Last night was pretty exciting. I think today promises to be equally as exciting. You know, when I was listening last night, I was thinking about a conversation I'd had with my dad a number of years ago. When my dad was 39, he had a heart attack. and. Every time he would go to a doctor afterwards, he would never tell them about it. So I said, Dad, you've got to let them know. And his response was, you know, they're doctors. They're supposed to know. <laughs> now, I went to medical school, and one of the things I learned in medical school was actually how little doctors do know, because they only see just a small slice of each patient's life. But one of the things I learned at medical school one of the lessons was taught to me that if you listen to a patient long enough, they'll tell you what's wrong with them. So caregivers and patients getting together, sharing data, will know so much more about themselves. And that means that people will be able to make the decisions 
that are right for them. These are the kinds of innovations that the pioneer portfolio at the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation was set up to support. And you know, when I look at this group, these kind of ideas for change, I see people who are thinking exciting thoughts, who have great ideas, and we want you to share those with us. And there's a number of ways you can do it. First, talk to someone who's here from the Pioneer Portfolio. And if you are here from the Robert Wood Johnson Pioneer Portfolio, just stand for a second so people can see you. Talk to one of them. Or tweet us at Pioneer RWJF, or connect to our website at rwjf.org backslash pioneer. Because together, we can make a difference. Thank you so much.